welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Well, today we're going to have a look at a puzzle by Matthias Martinka called Hashtag Sudoku for reasons that hopefully are clear. Uh, there is a hashtag in the grid. Um, now the actual instructions to this puzzle include the reference that the colouring is just for decoration or is it? Hmm. Hmm, that is a bit suspicious. So apparently this colouring may be more than just decoration and we'll have to we'll have to see what this means. What I will do, if I remember, is I will put two links under this puzzle uh, to, to, for you to be able to play the puzzle in our software because if we are going to have to get into some sort of strange structures and geometry, it may be better not to have this colouring already in the grid. So I'll try and include two links, one with the colours, one without the colours, and we'll see how we go. Um, now, anything else I want to mention before we kick off today? Uh, I don't think so. I did spend a very enjoyable hour this morning recording um, myself or recording me solving uh, more of the genuinely approachable pencil puzzles from the Discord server. So I think I've done another seven or eight of them. And it, well, I enjoyed them mightily. I made a right mess of some of them and you'll be able to see that on the channel probably tomorrow if I have time to edit the video. It takes me ages to edit the videos for the gap, um, for the gap puzzles. Um, because I have to sort of keep repositioning all of the instructions and then making sure that the puzzles are sort of in the right place on the screen. Anyway, as someone like me who's technically useless, these, these things are meant to try me um, or sent to try me. <laughs> but anyway, I will try and get that up for you uh, for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. If not, it'll probably be uh, Thursday morning, but wish me luck with that. Um, now, that's all I've got to tell you about. We've got loads of extra stuff coming on Patreon soon, but that's for another day. Um, and I have been absolutely thrilled to hear about so many of you receiving your copies of the book as well. If you do receive a copy of the book and if you love it, then do tweet me a picture at Cryptic Cracking. I'd be most grateful. Um, now let's get on with hashtag Sudoku and I will read you the rules. So normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage. So those four cells sum to 24. Uh, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So let's actually get rid of the highlighting here and let's um, think about what arrows mean. So that means that these three digits here, you add them up and whatever you get, you put it in the circle. This one's a bit more complicated look. So this is saying that this is the total of those two cells. Uh, so let's make these, I don't know, let's make these one and five, one of four, that's what seemed to come out when I pressed the button, one and four, so this would be a five therefore, so this, this could be a two and a three, and that could be a two and a three. So that would be a way of making this arrow work. Every single limb is adding to the five that we put in the circle. Now, do have a go at the puzzle. Click one of the links under the video. Um, that's how to play, and now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, let's get cracking. I don't want to immediately jump to geometry. It may be a red herring as well. So let's see if we can do anything without resorting to geometric tricks. There must always be a one and a two in a 12 cage. I and mean, we can see that because if we only put a one in, for example, the other three digits would be three, four, and five, and three, four, and five on their own add up to 12. So we must have a one and a two in there. There are two ways of making 12 in four cells, one, two, three, six, or one, two, four, five. There is only one way of making 29 in four cells. That is five, seven, eight, nine. Now we've got to be a bit careful with this arrow. You can't put nine on that arrow and you, you can't put five here because this digit will be higher than five. So the digit in the corner is a seven, eight, or a nine. And this square has a lot of optionality, um, but I suppose it's got to be a, a relatively low digit, doesn't it? It can't be. It can't be as high as five, or this digit would have to be a double-digit number. Uh, okay, uh, I don't see anything else I can do with that. Let's have a look at. Right. Well, let's start with the basics. Three cell arrows must add up to at least six. And that's because if we minimize the contents of this arrow, 
we could put 1, 2, and 3 in, for example. Well, that 1, 2, and 3 already add up to 6. So this square's got to at least equal 6. Exactly the same logic applies here. There's a, there's a very nice symmetry around this diagonal, isn't there? It's only really broken. Well, I've got cages at subtly different values, and the shape of these arrow cells is doing some work, I think. This square has a three cell arrow, and in fact, it's got two three cell arrows emanating from it. So that's also got to be at least equal to six. But this one, well, in fact, in the example I did earlier, I managed to prove this could be a five. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about this cell. Now, 14 in four cells could be two, three, four, five. So this one doesn't even have to have a one in it. Okay, and this is where we're going to get stuck, isn't it? This is where we're going to get stuck. Okay, let's have a look at the hashtag then and see if we can think about some geometry that might help us. So. Let's fill that in in blue. Now, I'm going to guess that this is going to be important. So what we can actually say about this hashtag is that this must be, if we think about what its composition is, it's made up of four sort of units of a Sudoku. That has got to be a complete set of the digits one to nine. Row three is a complete set of the digits one to nine. Row six is a complete set of the digits one to nine. Column three is a complete set of the digits one to nine. And column six is a complete set of the digits one to nine. So if we were to count these four intersections of those rows and columns twice, I'm gonna make them purple, then we could say then we could say that the blue squares plus these cells twice is exactly equal to four sets of the digits one to nine. Now, let's do the Scrabble analogy because some people find it very helpful to understanding set. So what I want to imagine is that I've actually written on a set of Scrabble tiles, let's make the Scrabble tiles blue, four sets of the digits one to nine. So I've literally taken one of the tiles, I've written a one on it. The next tile, I've written a two on it. And I've done that to one to nine, and then I've done it again, one to nine, again, one to nine, again, one to nine. So, and I'm gonna put all of these in a blue bag in this hand. So my blue bag contains four sets of the digits one to nine, exactly corresponding to these digits in the Sudoku. When I've actually, whatever was in this square, let's make this square a five, I've put this on two Scrabble tiles because this is obviously it's in row three and it's in column three. So if I want to make sure I've got 36 Scrabble tiles, four sets of the digits one to nine, I must make sure I include that digit twice on two Scrabble tiles. Now I'm gonna highlight a different four sets of the digits one to nine. Now this is where the guesswork comes in because what we've got to do I mean, it looks like it's going to be box one, box two, box four, and box five, but it might not be. Let's start with that and just see what that looks like. So I'm going to highlight those four boxes in orange. Hopefully, I think this is the best distinction for people who suffer with color blindness, um, orange and blue. Now, obviously, box one is a complete set of the digits one to nine. That's the rules of Sudoku. That's what's gonna be in box one if we successfully complete the puzzle, four sets of the digits one to nine. So the orange cells in total are, are four sets of the digits one to nine, just as the blue cells plus the purples is also four sets of the digits one to nine. Now let's imagine that square is a three. So, and also I'm gonna write these orange squares on 36 different Scrabble tiles and put them in an orange bag here. So I've got a blue bag and an orange bag, each with 36 tiles in, and basically each containing four sets of the digits one to nine. Now I want to imagine that this square here is a three. Now, if I go and rummage around in my orange, is this the orange? No, this is the blue one, isn't it? If I rummage around in the blue bag for a three, and I rummage around for the orange bag for a three, and I throw the threes away, then each bag will now contain 35 Scrabble tiles, but those Scrabble tiles will still be identical 
because I'm removing the same digit from both of them, and they were identical before, and they're going to be identical after. So any cell in this grid that just has two colors in it, I can basically discard from both bags. I don't have to know what these digits are, but I can remove all of these virtual digits from both Scrabble bags and still claim that both Scrabble bags contain the same thing. In a, oh, sorry, I missed out those ones. So at this point, it would be true to say that the orange bag, this one, and the blue bag, this one, provide, remembering that I've got these digits twice in, in the orange bag, still contain the identical set of digits. Don't know what the digits are, but I know they're identical. Now let's have a, th uh, a closer think about these four squares, because you can see these squares are twice in the blue bag, but only once in the orange bag. So what I could do is I could rummage around and find one of them in the orange bag and one of them in the blue bag and throw them away. And then I'd just be left with one of those digits in the blue bag. So these collapse down to just being blue. And now we should have, well, we can see very quickly we've got 16 orange digits. We should have 16 blue digits if I haven't made a mighty mistake. 7, 11, 12, 16. Yes, so we have 16 blue digits left in the, in the blue Scrabble bag, 16 digits left in the orange Scrabble bag, and we know these digits are identical. So at this point, we've learned something about the puzzle we didn't know at the start. We have learned that these digits, because of the geometry of this puzzle, well, no, actually not because of the, I mean, this would be true in any Sudoku. We've not done any jiggery-pokery involving the arrows yet, although I can see that we could. Um, now, do we, it's very tempting to me to collapse these down, I have to say. What do I mean by collapse them down? Well, yeah, it's going to be weird, though, because like this, this arrow circle is the sum of those three digits. And it's the sum of these three digits. So, in fact, this, if we were to remove these cells or these Scrabble tiles from blue, we could... We could treat this as being sort of 3x, if you like, because it's in the count three times. So if, if I abandon the notion of having identical Scrabble tiles in both bags and say I just want to make sure that the totals of each Scrabble, of each bag are the same. So I don't have to have 16 of each digit, uh, uh, of 16 digits or 16 tiles in both bags. I could have a different number of tiles in both bags, but they still sum to the same thing. Then you can see I can I can start to do that fairly easily. I could Yeah, I could find these digits and find these digits in the blue bag, remove them, and say I'm just instead of I'm just going to count this digit, whatever it is, three times. Because this digit is the sum of that, and it's the sum of that as well. So that would be an option open to me. But it's going to get very complicated if I do that. This one's going to get counted twice. This one's going to get counted twice. This one's going to get counted three times. And that one's going to get counted once. Um, do I want to do that or not? I mean, there's other jiggery pokery we could perform. I could get rid of, you know, I could take these two Scrabble tiles out and this one Scrabble tile out of blue and still allege that the blue, the blue bag and the orange bag summed up to the same number because that's the math, how the mathematics of the arrows work. These two digits sum to that. Let me just take a quick look at that. Hang on a second. Delete that, delete that, and I'm going to get. I don't know actually. I'm actually not at all sure that this is right. I'm not quite understanding what I'm meant to be appreciating about this.
Um, what I could do, what I could do with doing actually is if I can just take the oranges down to those cells. That might be useful. What do these orange cells add up to? 40. So if I can get rid of these from both sets. How do I do that efficiently? So, I, so at the moment we know the orange bag and the blue bag add to the same number. I'm going to remove two oranges and this blue and still allege they add to the same number. Now I want to get rid of this as well. So I'm going to get rid of this and we know this adds up to this. So that is also possible. And it's still true to say that the blues and the oranges add to the same number. Oh, this does collapse to something quite elegant, actually, because now I could remove these Scrabble tiles and this would count double. I could remove this Scrabble tile and these Scrabble tiles and these Scrabble tiles and this would count double because obviously this, the sum of this is the same as that and the sum of these is the same as that. So if I remove all of those, this one is just counted double. Let's do this. That one is just counted double and let's do the same there that becomes counted double so now I have got a relationship between these orange cells and these purple cells the purple cells times by two equal the orange cells and the orange cells add up to 40 so these cells individually add up to 20 and we know that they're at least equal to six in each case. So we haven't got many degrees of freedom there. Now, now, how do we know how to do that? Well, OK, we can't have a nine, can we, in any of them now? Because if I, if I have a nine in one of these, then the other, the other, that will count for, well, yeah, if we have a nine, then the other two have to add up to 11 or less, because we know in total they add up to 20. And we can't make 11 from two of these numbers because they're too high. So there is no nine in them. So now I've got these, these have to add up to 20. So I can't use an odd number. Oh no, I could double, I could use a double odd number. <laughs> you rotten thing. Yes, okay. So what I, what I could do is I could have two sevens. That's what I wasn't, wasn't appreciating. I could have two sevens and this would be a six. Or I could have two sixes and this would be an eight. Is there any other way of making that work? Um, these have to add up to 20. If we go, they can't all be different. Yeah, that's the way to think about it. They can't all be different because they'd add up to 21. So there must be a repeat. The repeat can only happen in these two squares. You can't double the eight because this can't be four. Yes, so there are two possibilities. This is never a seven. These two are never an eight. And we have a very, very limited window to make this work. Oh, right, right. No, it's actually, it's, it's very simple and it's beautiful. These cannot be double seven because then where do I put seven in box one? It has to go in the 12 cage where it definitely can't go because you can't make the other three digits only add up to five. That's really lovely. So that's a six pair. Six goes in the 12 cage. The 12 cage is now one, two, three, and six. This square here is definitely an eight. There's definitely a one on both of those arrows. 
because the only way of making 8 in 3 cells is either 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. There's definitely a 6 in that 2 by 2 there. Oh, actually, I'm just thinking, I've, if I know these are 6, why don't I extend those arrows and put 1s, 2s and 3s on them? That must be powerful. Oh, well, it's really, yeah, I mean, it's really powerful in this box, but it's, it tells us something we already know, which is that 1, 2 and 3 go in the 12 cage. Um, okay. By Sudoku, there's also a one look in this region here because of these ones operating off the off the eight arrow. And I suppose I can do maths and work out the value of this, which you'll you'll know if you know the secret. We can work out the value of this domino because those four squares add to 25. Those add up to six. That's 31. Now, any complete box of a Sudoku will contain all of the digits one to nine once each. If you add up those digits, you get 45. So those two squares have got to add up to 14. So they are either five, nine or six, eight. Oh, which is very nearly important. Oh, oh, I see. We've got geometry again going on here, do we? What are those two squares? So we've got 24, 30 there. So these, by the secret, have to add up to 15. So there's 6, 7, 8 or 9. It still doesn't quite work. Um... Ah, no, it does. Well, it does work a little bit. That can't be 5, 9. Because if that's 5, 9, these two, well, yeah, I think this is right. If this is 5, 9, this square becomes a 7 or an 8, and this square becomes a 9. So let's actually do this slowly. If, that's, if this is 5, 9, this square cannot be 9, and neither can this one. So the only place for 9 in the box now is here. But that means that this domino is adding up to 15 without using a 9. So it is a 7-8 pair, and that cell has no value. So that tells us that this little domino here is not 5-9. It's 6-8, which means that those are not 8. And that means... I don't think it works the same way the other way round, does it? That's seven, eight. That would be nine, five. Yeah, that works. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, I don't think I can elaborate on that any further. Have I restricted this a bit more? Um, what have we removed? We've removed the ability of this to be eight which used to exist. So if this, if this is seven, it has to be five and two. If this is nine, that has to be one, two or four. So this can't be three anymore. That's really strange. Um, yeah, okay, eight, five, three used to be an option and it no longer is. Uh, and three, yeah, three can't go with seven or eight Okay, yeah, so I think we get this down to 1, 2, or 4, which I'm fairly confident is useless, or fairly confident in stating is useless. What's this cell? That cell looks like it's sort of the, you know, it, it's, the, it's the gooseberry, isn't it? It's been left out of the beautiful logic that we've done on the double six eight stuff. But we don't know. I've done a load of deleting of the set. <laughs> this one used to be in a set in my, um, it used to be in, I can't remember which bag it was in. I think it was in the blue bag, wasn't it? But then I took it out because I swapped it for two oranges. So this one, 
What do we know about it? We know it's not 1, 2, 3, or 6. So it's 4, 5, 7, 8, or 9. Which is absolutely useless. Um, well, it's not 4. That I can tell you. And it's not 4, because if it's 4, that domino would have to be a 1, 3 pair. And this would have to be a 1 or a 3. And you can't have three digits selected from, or three cells in a Sudoku in the same row selected from just two different digits. That won't work. So that's not four. Um. <laughs> I've got nothing. Uh, what about what about this having to add up to eight? So this could be six two, or one seven, or th it could be oh it could only be three five, if that was one six and this was a seven, which unfortunately looks possible, doesn't it? Right, what are we missing here? We must be missing something. Normally I'm missing Sudoku. I am well aware of this. Let me have a look at Sudoku. How can Sudoku get us out of the mire here? These eight sums can never involve the six. So let's do some comprehensive pencil marking. And... Hmm. I was wondering if these 17 cages were going to give us anything, but, well, they would be very useful if this was a very low digit. But I don't think it has to be a very low digit. So, and if it's as much as a 5, you could include even 3 in, in the other side of the domino. It could be 5, 3, 9. Have I lost some of the potency here by doing all of the deletions of the of the set theory? That's the other thought I'm having. So what what was the longhand version of the set? The longhand version of the set was all of these came back in. That comes back in, but at the cost of these coming back in. So are we back to 16 versus 16 here? We've got 7 here. Yeah, it's the same thing I did before. Yeah, so this was the long form version of the set. So in this version, we're not dealing with totals anymore. We're dealing with absolute. Like there is now an absolute requirement. We have now we can now use the logic from earlier to say it is essential that there is an 8 in in the orange cells because there is an eight in my scrabble tile full of purple cells i've realized i've used purple there i should have used blue um, because there is an eight in my blue bag there must be an eight in my orange bag and there's no eight there there can be an eight in a 14 cage though one two three and eight and you can probably you can't have an eight on its own arrow you could have you could have an eight here if this can be a nine Oh, that's beautiful. Right, that cannot be a 9, believe it or not. Because if that's a 9, where do you put 9 in orange now? Nowhere. You can't go anywhere. You can't put 9 in a 14 cage, because you can't make 3 cells add up to 5. And you can't put 9 ever on a 2 cell arrow, because the, the circle emanating, that the, the arrow emanates from, will have to be at least a 10. So there is... That's not possible. You can't have nine there. So you can't have so you can't have eight in this two by two. That's right, you can't have eight in this two by two. So one of these fourteen cages now is one, two, three, eight. And if that was an eight, then Two of them would be one, two, three, eight. That can't be possible, can it? Can you actually have two one, two, three, eights here? Um, hmm. 
Hmm. I don't see why not. Although I'm now thinking maybe a one, one way to prove this can't be an 8 is to look at this box again. Because if this is an 8, 1 and 6, here is a knowledge bump for you from Cracking the Cryptic, do not add up to 8. So one of these is going to be a 6 and a 2, and one of them is going to be a 1 and a 7. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because then I would have to put a 7 in blue, and there is nowhere for it to go. <laughs> Every cell in blue is pencil marked, and none of them have the ability to be 7. So that is not an 8 by the virtue of magic. That is pure magic. Now, that... If I can do this one more time, I'm actually going to know what this square is, which would be absolutely mad. Now, is it set? See, seven looks possible, doesn't it? Because seven puts no pressure on the one and the six. And then I'd have the... Oh, uh, no, it really doesn't. Uh, seven loosens the pressure entirely because, in fact, then I could have a one seven on the eight arrow as well. Because I'd obviously, if this is a seven, I've now got to put seven in orange. Seven could go in a 14 cage with one, two, and four as well. Or seven couldn't go on its own arrow, but it could go on that arrow with a one, which we know is in this little quadruple anyway. Five. Can I get rid of five in here? If this is five, that, yeah, that can work. Actually, I didn't think, yeah, seven can work here. I didn't even think about this little leg of the arrow, though. But it can be a 1-6 pair. If that was a 1-6 pair... No, okay, don't know. So, if that's a 5, that's a 2-3 pair. So this has to be a 1-4. If this is 5, this has to be a 1 or a 4. So this has to be a 1 or a 4. Ah, that's right. This is beautiful. It's the same sort of thing again. This is not 5. Wow. This is, this is so clever. Right. If this is a 5, how are we going to make these arrows all work? That's our task. And it's not easy to do. Because... What you cannot do is put 2, 3 on this arrow. Because if you do that, 1 plus 6 has to equal 8, and it doesn't. So, this has to be a 1, 4 arrow. Let's actually put it in. It uh, uh, doesn't matter which way round it goes. Let's just try and make this a 1, 4. Now we've got a problem here. Because this 5 arrow has to be a 2, 3. So... The only way that these two can work is if they are also a 1-4 pair, and that square has no option. So this is not 5. Isn't that cool? That's so... I mean, it's ridiculously good constructing. This is now a 7. So this is now a 1-6, which means that is a 2-3. That is not a 6 anymore. We know that they, that added up to 15, so that is not a 9 anymore. Oh, it's still, it's so close to doing something, isn't it? But not close enough. Um, now, let's think about this. So now I have the task. Now I have the task of putting, well, these squares now add up to 15. But that could be a 1-6 pair. In fact, may, yes, okay, of course, of course. How is that not a 1-6 pair? That's a better question. If it's not a 1-6 pair, I have to... Because I, if I'm not going to put 1 or 6 on this arrow, I have to put 1 and 6 on that arrow. And the moment I do that, I'm saying 1 plus 6 equals 8, which is nonsense. But the moment, the moment I put 1 or 6 on this arrow, I must put the other one on, because we know the arrow adds to 7. So that's really strange. And I, I'm a bit embarrassed I didn't see that instantly, but I didn't. But that is a 1-6 pair. Now... This 
is not one seven or two six. This is three five. This puzzle is magic. It is magic. Now, have we have we done enough now to figure the puzzle out? I know that there's got to be. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Now that. I think I, do. I think we said this before. There's definitely an eight in one of those. So one of these is a one, two, three, eight quadruple. I can't see how to do that. Two and three. I've got to be in two of these three cells. If we put the two and three in there, that would give the opportunity for that to be one and eight. Ah, ah, here's something interesting. This eight arrow. Yeah, this is good. The, however, this eight is made up here. It's different from however this eight is made up. And that's because imagine these were the same version of eight. So let's imagine they were both one, two and five. In box five, you'd have to put a two in that two by two by Sudoku. And there's no two in there. But if this was 1, 3, 4, and this was 1, 3, 4, you'd have to put a 4 in there. And there's no room for a 4 either. So one of these is one version of 8, and the other one is another version of 8. Now, we don't know which is which, but we do know that they're different. Which... Which might be important. Um, how on earth do we get to grips with this? I have not got a clue. That cage has got to have a four and a five in it. This cage, we actually know its contents very precisely. That's four, five, seven, and nine. Um, there's no overlap between those cells and four, five, seven, and nine, alas. Right, if that was one, two, three, eight, that would force an eight up here. Which I don't think that's telling us anything very interesting. Oh dear, sorry, I'm really, I really feel quite stuck now. Now, maybe this digit... Yeah, maybe the seven arrow I can do more with. That square there has to be a four or a five, doesn't it? Because it can't be one, two, three, or six. So that square's got to be two or three. So now I've got a two, three pair in column one. Nope, <laughs> still not doing it. Um, ah, you rotten thing. Come on. How do we finish this off? <laughs> um, I don't know. I really, really do not know. Um, can I, is there something or more I can do with this domino? If this if this is six nine, that is definitely a seven five two combination. Seven five two. So this would be so that would be a nine and that would be an eight. No. If that's seven eight, this becomes nine. Seven eight here. Five. So this becomes. Nine five. Oh, so this can never be a five. Is that true? It quite can't be a five if this is a nine. Hang on, let me just double check that. If that's seven eight, 
That becomes 5, 9. That is true. So this has to, the way that this 9 arrow would work is with a 7, 8 and a 1 or a 2. And the way it worked the other way round, when that was 6, 9, is this was a 5 and this was a 2. This is never a 4. But this can be a 5. That cell there can be a 5 if this is a 7. Is there, is there something more there? I sort of feel like 7, 8 looks very difficult. 5, 9. 5, 9. That becomes 7. That becomes 8. That becomes 1, actually. 1. 1 is doing what? Removing itself from there. They would be a 2-3 pair, but they wouldn't necessarily... I don't know if we care about... Well, oh, they would have to be different again. Now, that's quite interesting. Hang on, let me just think about that. Because you can't put them in there. So what I'm, th one, what I'm thinking is, if that's 6-9 if that's and that's... No, it was, was it 7-8? I wanted to get this down to 9-5. So that's if that's 7-8, this is 9, this is 5. This square here is therefore 7, so that's 8. This becomes 1. Now, those two squares now can't be the same. Because if they're the same, where do you put that digit in this box? It's got to go in the 29 cage, which is impossible. So these are then different. But maybe that just relaxes all the pressure because then, you know, we have no pressure up there either. Yeah, OK, and it doesn't it doesn't become unpleasant, does it? Which is um, to borrow a chess analogy. I'm watching far too much chess at the moment. I'm sure you all are. Um, so, OK, so what else can we do here? Can we... Uh, can we do anything with these 17 cages? We can. There's no 5 in this, well, in the top of this one at least. So there's such an absence of pressure on either of these 17 cages. I'm missing something here, aren't I? It's very distressing. 6 must be in one of those three cells. If hmm, if that was a six, this would be a five because we'd we'd have a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in column nine. That would be a five, which would tell us that this was a nine. That would be really powerful. But. I don't see how to do this. This is very distressing. <laughs> um, is it going to be... Can we do something... Ah, right. Okay, I, c I can do something. I can influence those squares. They would be different. That would push down these two digits. Wow, wow, okay. Okay, here's something. I'm going to change tack altogether and use Fistmafel. Because why not? We've already used set once up here. I'm going to use set again. Now that does mean a brief excursion into Fistemafel land because um, some of you may be watching the channel for the first time. I apologize if you've seen this before, but I do think I might need it. I can, well, what I'm going to use it to do is I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it to show that these two digits are not ones, twos, or threes. 
which is quite interesting. And the reason these digits are not ones, twos and threes is because, let me duplicate the tab, um, and reset the puzzle. So we've got nothing in the grid now. Uh, I want to look at these. So I'm going to do the Scrabble trick again. I'll do this quickly because we've already got used to the idea of Scrabble tricks. Um, let's remove that one. These blue cells are definitely four sets of the digits one to nine. Let's count. One for that row, two for that row, three for that box, four for that box. So four sets of the digits one to nine. Let's highlight in orange those columns. So that's a different four sets of the digits one to nine, but still our Scrabble bags would contain the identical contents. This digit is in both bags. I'm gonna find it and throw it away. I'm gonna do exactly the same for every cell that has two colours in it. Ta-da! That is the Fistimafel ring. And it's the simplest way I know of proving it. So our Scrabble bags here, the blue and the, and the orange Scrabble bag, have the same digits in them. They, are, they were the same before when we had four sets of the digits, one to nine. I just took the same digits out of both bags. So they're still the same. And we've proved that this blue ring contains the identical digits to the two two by twos in the corner of the grid. Now let's go back and see why this matters in this puzzle. The ring is very hard to see, but I don't really want to reduce, get rid of my earlier coloring. These cells, that's the, that's the Fistimafel ring we've just highlighted, and it is analogous to the two by twos in the corners. Now if you study the two by twos in the corners here, they're quite restricted. In particular, Outside of this box, where do you put the ones, twos, and threes in these two by twos? Nowhere. You can't put a one, two, or three here. You can't put a one, two, or three here because we've got a one, two, three along here. You can't put a one, two, three here. So if there are any ones, twos, and threes in green, they have to be in those sweat cells in this two by two in the corner. And there's only one of each of them. Well, that's a one, two, or a three. That's a one, two, or a three. That's a one or a two. That's all we could ever have by way of ones, two, and threes in the ring. So those two squares are not ones, twos, and threes. They are now fours and fives, which means they are the big digit. These are different digits because of the coloring we did earlier. One of them is five, one, two. So one of these is a five. One of them is a four, three, one, which means these squares all lose their ability to be high. And I'm wondering if this puts pressure on the 17 cages now, because this, this means these dominoes have to add up to at least 14. Oh, this is right. This is it. It's this one, isn't it? It's this one because of the three five pair. We almost, I almost got this before, but I couldn't see why this had to be high. But now it does have to be high. Yes, it does have to be high because this, even if I make this a three, this domino is adding up to 14 at least. If it's a 3, it's 14. If it's a 2, it's 15. If it's a 1, it's 16. Now, I can't put 5 into this domino. So there's no way of putting 5, 9 in here. That means this digit is at least a 6. And if this digit is at least a 6, I've now got a quadruple in this column. And that square is a 5, which is what we've wondered about before. And that means those squares are not five. But more important than that, this square is now a nine in the corner because it can no longer, we can no longer support seven because this can't be a five. So this is five, nine. That's the seven. That's the eight. That's the one. And all of a sudden we've got more digits. That is now a seven, eight pair at the top of the grid. That is now a six by Sudoku. So that can't be a one because that would force seven, nine. Um, so three, if this is a two, we need, sorry, what am I talking about? Yeah, seven, nine is impossible. If this is three, we need an eight here, which doesn't work because we have, we need 14. Perfect. That's got to be a two and that's got to be a nine. And it, oh, this is lovely. And now if that's a two, we know the nature of the eight triple. This is now five and one. And this is four, 
and this is a 1-3 pair because we know this is different to that. And now for our next magical deduction we will put one there. No, that wasn't magic, that was plain old Sudoku. Um, what do we need in this column? We need threes and fours into those squares. We we know there's a five in that domino, that might be helpful. We know this cell is not a one. We know, can we do, well now I suppose I know those digits as well, don't I? They are four, five, six, and nine. Let's just check 15, 24, yeah, that does add up to the right number. These definitely are not nine because of this nine here. Okay, that's not quite done enough for us. This four is seeing that square, so that finishes off most of column nine anyway. This three is lovely, that gives us a two there. Oh, right, and I get a deadly looking one three pattern that will have to be resolved by this 17 gauge. Um, that's very cute indeed. Now, what next? I can, oh, this is interesting. Yes, where does three go in row six? Not there because of the three five pair. So three is over here and that square therefore is a two, which means that's a five, which means there's no five down here. This two is fixing two and three at the top. That's placing three in box four again. That square is not a three. So three is definitely in this 14 cage. I've got to remember one of these 14 cages is 1, 2, 3, 8. It would be very nice to know which one. That doesn't seem to be a 6 anymore. So those three digits are 3, 7 and 8. Ah, so that's a 3. It's a naked single. It sees 7, 8 in the column. So this is a 3. This is a 2. This column needs a 4 or a 6 into this square can't be a five because of this digit and two four or six into these squares but we don't yet seem to know the order what I want to be have to do is oh I can do it already I can do it already I've looked at this digit about six times since I got this down to being one or three and I've been like oh if you know, one goes with seven, nine. And then I looked up here and I've been, oh, it would be really nice to be able to rule out seven or nine from these squares and therefore know that this couldn't be a seven, nine pair. But that is a seven, nine pair, isn't it? So that is not a one because that would require a seven, nine pair here and this would have no option. So that's three, that's one, that's one, that's three. Now we need 14 here, but we have a variety of ways of doing that, I think. Let's just fill in the options and see what we can get rid of. We get rid of nine into that one and we can get rid of five into five into this one. Ah, and we can get rid of eight there. So that's five and that's nine. Nine comes out of those squares. This five is lovely. That gives me the five and the three. That places the three up there. Still, we don't quite know Oh, there's definitely a 1 in that 14 cage. So it's, ah, that's done it. Okay, yeah, okay. This one and this one plus this 3 mean that this has two cells in it that sum to 4. So it has two more cells in it that sum to 10, which can't be 1, 9, or you'd repeat the 1. Can't be 3, 7, you'd repeat the 3. It can't be 6, 4, there's already a 6 in the cage. So this one is, well, that means that must be a 2. And this must be a 1-8 pair. And that means that's a 7 and this is an 8. And that, oh, there's a 6 here. We can get rid of a bit more Sudoku. I don't want to speak too soon, so I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I, was, I wanted to say it was going well. Um, 4, 8, 9. The 8 can only go there in row 3. The 9 can only go here and this can only be a 4. So those squares there have got to be five and seven. We can do that. Five can come out of those cells as a result. That square's a four or, oh, this is a four nine pair. 
So we now know these two digits, they must be 5 and 8, and there's a 5 here. So now we can use maths if we want to, to get this digit. Why, why, why wouldn't we? That's 20. 28 and 8 is 36, so that's a 9. Yeah, we could have seen that if we'd seen 9 was missing. Uh, that's got to be a 9 by Sudoku. And we now know that this should have in it 1, 4, and 7. And that's not 4, look. Oh, there's a 147 triple in this column, so that forces that to be the 6, that to be a 1. Now that 8 is fixing some things down here. This 8 is fixing things over here. That's fixing the 4, fixing the 1, fixing the 7. This square here is a 9, I think. Keep going. That square's there. It's got to be a 2. Can we do the 1? Oh, we just need a little bit more to finish this off. 4 and... It's absolutely hosing it down outside. I don't know if you can hear that on the... on the. Um, this is... What is this? 4 and 7. So that's got to be 4. That's got to be 7. I'm slightly surprised about that. I thought that was going to crack these dominoes, but it doesn't seem to have done that. I've got a 4-6 pair in this column, so that's got to be 5. This 4 is giving me a 6 here, 4 here, 9 here, 6 here, 4 here, 9 here. Um, now, let's have a look down this column. That's got to be an 8. That's fixing the 8, the 1, the 1 and the 6. That's good. These squares are 2, 6 and 7. So that's a 2. Placing 2 here, placing 4 here, placing 6 and 7 here. That's a 5, and the 4-7 pair is resolved by that digit amongst others, and I think we've solved it. Yeah, wow, hashtag Sudoku. Please, if you've watched this video and you think that that puzzle is magnificent, and you should, because it is, that is just stunning, please tweet it, tweet about it using hashtag Sudoku, because this, I mean, this is mental, isn't it? It really is. It's so, it's so intricate. I mean, actually, it's quite hard to see. Let's actually go to the Fistemafel version, reset the puzzle, and think about how what we had to do to solve it. We had to work out that the hashtag was actually important in terms of understanding the, ge the geometry of the starting position. And we had to use maths to work out that those three cells had to sum to 20, which was really beautiful, actually. And I loved the fact that you could work out this couldn't be a double seven because it would break the 12 cage. And then you almost had to back out of that because that wasn't enough. We needed to, in order to learn more about this cell and its nature, we had to conclude things like it couldn't be a 9, and the only way of doing that really was to understand the geometry, again, by using the sort of long-form set. And in the end, we even had to collapse into the Fistemafel ring, and there might have been a, a quicker way of doing that bit, but that was the way I found. And it was it's just stunning that by limiting these squares to being the high digits on their eight arrows, limited those squares to be low digits within the 17 cage, and that was enough because of the 3-5 pair here to cause trouble in column 9. It's just mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Loved it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.